Well, hello there and welcome to Dino's Vault. Finally, finally, our prayers have been answered and I think I'm the last one to review the Himalayan 450, albeit better late than never because you guys kept requesting me, kept messaging me, Dino, do you review it or not? But anyway, finally, thanks to SVR Motors Engineering for always supporting my vision. They've given the demo bike for uh, my, you know, ride review and uh, I've been riding it to my heart's content on road off road uh, you know high speed uh, testing little bit of uh, jumping around and everything and today I am up and ready with my verdict So first of all, let's go through the changes. Now this is a completely different motorcycle when compared to the previous Gen Himalayan. And uh, let's uh, look at the changes. First of all, the design. The chassis is completely different. As you can see, uh, the chassis orientation, uh, the way uh, the chassis is laid out, the twin spar frame and uh, tubular steel frame. So, and a bolt on subframe, yeah. So that makes it a lot, a lot more flexible and uh, you know better handling better flickability better maneuverability and then of course uh, the tank has a better design it has a slim profile design just to grip the tank easily but here it bulges out to accommodate better tank capacity 17 liters uh, note that point your honor because larger tank capacity translates into better tank range and everyone who has been touring around and traveling and exploring with the himalayan this is a welcome addition and all the changes that they made seems like they have one upped the Himalayan older generation model by a significant margin and that was what we required or that is what we expected with the sequel. Now the lighting is all LED as well. Uh, the front LED headlamp kind of reminds us of uh, that of the Super Meteor to some extent. Yeah. And you have a small fly screen, smoked fly screen, uh, which hardly does its part, but uh, you get a larger windscreen as well. Maybe that is an accessory add on, or maybe the top spec variant, I don't know. But still, that larger windscreen will do its part. But this one is there just for the namesake. Uh, then you have the LED turn blinkers, which look good. Value addition, an important inclusion is the Showa USD folks. 41 mm USD folks make a world of difference. Better front end feel, rock solid stability through the corners, uh, flawlessly, you know, following the line through the corners. 21 inch front wheel, 17 inch rear wheel. So that is a blend front wheel able to tackle obstacles. The 17 inch uh, radial rear tire comes from C8, 17 inch wheel and a 140 section rear tire to offer better road grip and also better flickability and maneuverability through city traffic. Then comes the seat height. Seat height is 825 mm. You can raise it and you can lower it with a low seat option up to 800 mm. So which gives you the flexibility to play around. Then you have the monoshock at the back with preload adjustability. And it is really well, uh, you know, a rugged monoshock that can take on any kind of punishment. Again, the exhaust is all new. It is upswept exhaust to allow you to, you know, <coughs> go completely berserk over the dirt roads or the rocks in the uh, Himalayas or in the Ladakh uh, region. Again, you can see a massive rear disc. This is 270mm rear disc and a 320mm front disc. Dual channel ABS is available and uh, it is switchable ABS. So you can switch off ABS only on the rear wheel. So that is the off-road mode. And then of course the seating ergonomics. The seating ergonomics are perfectly sorted. So when you sit on the bike, uh, it gives you a sense of uh, comfort and uh, you know versatility because you can ride it to the office, you can uh, you know amble around in the city, uh, you can also flick it through city traffic, and at the same time the weekend rides will be far more enjoyable. Uh, the cruising speed is around 100 to 110 effortlessly. And are there any vibrations? Well. To start out, you don't feel any vibrations, but as you rev the hell out of it, then you'll start feeling the vibrations somewhere near the groin area, near the seat, and a little bit on the foot pegs, but uh, it is not to the extent of bothering you. Then another uh, good inclusion is the grips. The handlebar grips are of superior quality and offer 
very good uh, feel when you hold them the handlebar and the handlebar is positioned towards the rider so you don't have to reach out to it again very good uh, inclusion in terms of comfort foot pegs are perfectly positioned open teeth foot pegs and open teeth uh, brake lever for uh, you know extreme off roading you can just pull off this and get better uh, grip on your uh, foot and uh, yeah uh, perfectly set again not to you know scrape around even when you are cornering hard through the mountain twisties another inclusion is the 4 inch color tft console as you can see this is how the uh, analog uh, version looks with the rpm rev counter gear position indicator speedo speedometer odometer and uh, you have rest of the information right over there and uh, you can switch between this one and digital if you switch to digital this is how it looks <coughs> so you can go to home and this is how it will look and here if you swipe around you can see the trip meters and then you have the fuel consumption voltage engine temperature that's pretty much it so this is the layout of the 4 uh, inch color tft console you have uh, turn by turn navigation and google google maps integrated into them now another uh, point i'd like to highlight is if you can come around this side you can see that the side stand is of very good quality it is uh, maybe made up of aluminium but the point is that it is inclined very very uh, in a very sharp angle so for adv bikes it has to be somewhere near this height so when it's inclined somewhere here you can easily pick it up and start riding especially when it's completely saddled up when it is completely saddled up and it goes so far down that is when it is not easy for shorter riders to pick it up and start riding so that is a very valid point i think they'll have to look into it and uh, tweak the side stand for a steeper angle such that it is it just leans on the side and then it is easier for the rider to pick it up and start riding again the tail lamp <coughs> you might be wondering where is the tail lamp dino bhai well the tail lamp is this one and the same thing uh, integrates the turn indicators if you can see so this has turn indicators in integrated into the stop lamp so that is clever engineering and uh, top class engineering as well nowadays almost all the bikes are trying to adopt the same uh, philosophy where you have the turn indicators doing the job of a stop lamp so it looks seamless and it looks well put together so i think we've uh, covered everything now suspension travel is a crucial thing 200 mm of suspension travel front and rear so that really helps the suspension not to bottom out even when you're off-roading really really hard again the steel bash plate or the aluminum bash plate is very very well sorted and massive ground clearance 230 mm of ground clearance so that is another welcome addition now talking about the star of the show the 452 cc liquid cooled dohc uh, fuel injected sherpa engine the word sherpa is derived from the uh, tibetan uh, uh, you can say members who reside in the southern parts of himalayas and who are really good with mountaineering so it is clearly indicating the fact that this is the mountains calling the Himalayas. So 452cc single liquid cooled engine puts out 40 PS of max power and 40 Newton meters of max torque. So the torque is really, really heavy and uh, immediately apparent in every gear. And then you get a six speed gearbox as well, which is a beautiful inclusion for highway cruising. The six speed, uh, sixth gear is basically there for uh, cruising and uh, that really helps those who want to travel a lot of miles through the course of the day now the areas of improvement the tires sear tires are more than good enough for a average user and for daily usage but for those who want to explore and push the boundaries and test the limits of the motorcycle for them i think medzella turan's tires would be a value addition i think they can swap them and get it uh, swapped once they buy the bike or maybe royal enfield can look into including medzella turan's as standard fitment in the future upgrades so that's pretty much it price starts from 2.69 lakhs x showroom and uh, how does it fare to ride let's hit the road now let's get going well 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 now that i've given you a complete overview of what the himalayan 450 is all about let's actually ride the thing or ride the machine and see how it fares in the real world conditions where all that hype and all the spec sheet stuff translates into real world capabilities the dash four inch dash lights up beautifully
it does accelerate really really well and pretty quickly and uh, it feels pretty swift footed does it feel easy enough to swing around yes it does that's kind of okay and uh, I think it can pull further as well that's not a big deal but uh, yeah the acceleration seems very impressive the st stability of the bike feels very impressive and uh, another thing is uh, the brakes are very impressive now you get a 320 mm disc and a larger front disc larger rear disc I think 270 mm rear disc ABS dual channel ABS switchable ABS as well and that's really good you get a slipper clutch I mean slip and assist clutch right by wire so they have left no stone unturned uh, Showa suspension, USD forks for better front end feel That really makes a world of difference to you know give you a better front end feel uh, To prevent that nose dive when you are braking hard And uh, it's pretty pretty impressive Saddle is nice and comfortable And uh, 21 inch front, 17 inch rear So the rear 17 inch I think is to give you better flickability and uh, capability maneuverability through city traffic that is something you need to understand the exhaust note is pretty good as well let's just stop here and give you the exhaust note hmm. pretty impressive Now let's check the capability of, uh, you know, ambling around at uh, lower speeds in higher gear. So now we are in the optimal gearing. Now shift up, third, fourth, fifth, forty. 8 kilometers per hour in fifth. Oh, there's no, not too much of knocking. Yes, there's a little bit below 45, and uh, once you inch, uh, there's a little bit of stuttering in sixth gear. But in fifth gear, how low can it go without stuttering around? Yeah, it can go up to 40 without stuttering around, which is decent enough. So again you saw the capability of uh, you know low speed high gear ambling around and the cruising speed I would say just pull in the same gear that's because of the abundance of torque 40 newton meters of torque available the 100 is effortless Is there a bit of vibration apparent? Yes, there is very minute of vibration. Uh, you can uh, say it is negligible. No adjustable levers, but the lever feel is good. Again, the switch gear, thankfully, it is not the same as the Meteor. And uh, they have given it a slightly better feel. I'm so glad they have. Now, let us stop here and try to change the mode. ABS is on so the performance really good comfort is really good 
Can you stand up and ride? Yes, you can. But the handlebar could have been slightly lifted up. So I think risers uh, will really help the handlebar uh, lift up a little bit. Apart from that, everything seems spot on. Uh, high on comfort, really high in terms of equipment. Very good value for the kind of pricing they have offered. 2.69 lakhs X showroom to start with. So you guys can see how effortlessly it handles any kind of rough terrain. So we're doing around 40 plus on this short dirt trail. It's far more flickable, easily flickable than the previous Himalayan. Feels far more at home. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Gravel or stones or anything, it just glides over them with consummate ease. So that's the Himalayan for you guys. Super impressive in every aspect. But is it better than the 390? Uh, well, not quite right there, but very close because the th Adventure 390 still is and still remains the benchmark in the adventure touring segment in the entry level adventure touring segment we gotta wait till the tiger 400 shows up let's see how they come up with their machine but the himalayan is way better than the previous installment and almost close inching towards you know taking up the throne from the adventure 390 but adventure 390 is still the king of the segment oh oh i'm loving this man it's just <laughs> effortless effortless absolutely effortless so guys let me tell you one more thing that the price advantage is still with the himalayan because it's priced at 2.69 lakhs onwards the adventure x is priced uh, starts from 2.8 lakhs so the himalayan enjoys the price advantage so thanks for watching catch you guys in the next video until then take care god bless and ride safe